If I can have your attention here in the media center and up in the press box, we are now joined by the race winning driver of the 49th annual Alabama 500, and that is Brad Keselowski, driver of the number two Miller Lite Ford for Team Penske. This was his fifth victory in 18 races at Talladega Super Speedway. That's a pretty good ratio for Super Speedway racing and for any racetrack in general. Walk us through how you were able to get it done today, please. Yeah, it's, uh, of course, a, a special day. Any day you can win, but uh, to win at Talladega and, and for the fifth time is, um, you know, something I was never sure I'd ever have the opportunity to do. You know, just winning here once felt pretty incredible, and it's hard to believe that was, you know, eight some years ago. And um, to win here uh, again, it, it, it still feels pretty darn good. It doesn't feel much different. I'm a little older now, and uh, but uh, you, you know, you never know when your first win or last win could be. And you know, and I, I want to, of course, soak this one up and, and be thankful for it. Um, and, and of course, there's a lot of carnage and, and other things that we were able to survive that uh, give me good reason to be thankful for as well. But uh, you know, I think we made it through three big wrecks. Um, and you know the the races uh, here till they get in the spring and, and both Daytonas we got caught up in all the big ones this one we made it through all the big ones and um, you know I thought we were probably pretty strong in those other races and it just uh, didn't have the luck today we had the the luck uh, that we needed and uh, then we were able to execute at the end with uh, the moves on the last two or three laps uh, so uh, just really really special win uh, to be able to put it all together at the end Okay, we're going to open the floor for questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start here with Jenna, and we'll work our way around. She's running for you. Running. You, you are an important person. That's so important. Jenna Fryer, AP. Congratulations, Brad. Thank you very much. Paul was in here earlier, and I asked him, I, I pointed out that your first cup victory came at Talladega in 2014. You came here in a must-win situation. He told you at Charlotte that you had to come here and win. <laughs> yeah. So um, when you are in these positions, what is it that makes you able to step up and rise to the occasion and deliver in, in big instances? Well, you know, you... You love to be able to pat yourself on the back and say it, it's all skill, but there is some luck that's involved in this. You know, in 2014, we were in one of the big wrecks and it just hit us in an area that didn't damage the car to affect its performance. Very similar here today uh, where we, we made it through the wrecks, but I feel like what's critical to, to be successful here, uh, whether it's a cutoff race or must win or not must win is, you know, you know when you come here uh, that probably three out of every four races, you're, you're gonna get caught up in a wreck or something like that happens. But the races where you know you, you have the good fortune, where you don't get caught up in a wreck or you don't have something break or, or any of those things, you have to take those races, run up front and win them. And I think that's what we've been able to do. Um, so you know we wrecked out of the last three plate races, which really stunk because we had great cars at those and, and I thought we made great moves and led a lot of laps. Um, so coming here, it's kind of felt like you know uh, a hand of cards where you're like, well, I can't keep getting the bad cards, so I'm gonna get some good cards. Uh, and when you get them, you better make a good play with them. And, and I think we probably felt that coming into today. Um, so, it, and being able to, to put that all together, Jenna, I would say, um, you know, you have to take the races where you don't have bad luck and, and win at them. And, and that's what we've been able to do. And um, today it was one of those days for us. No problem. We'll go next to Bob, and then we'll go to Kelly, and then to David. Uh, Bob Parker, CSPN. Um, after some of these races, you've talked about being a gladiator and, <laughs> and, and we seen the cars have been flipping and everything. This was, there were a lot of hard wrecks, but all the cars stayed on the ground. And yet there were only 14 cars running at the, at the end of the race. So is that, is that less ridiculous than cars getting <laughs> up in the air? Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. Um, you know, I feel like some weeks we race and this is probably a little bit easier than it should be. And in some weeks we race and it's probably... A little bit uh, harder than it should be and you know if you probably average them all out it's probably about right so um talladega definitely <laughs> brings it back to to the more aggressive side uh but i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing there's there's some weeks where you know i, I kind of feel a little bad about uh, the paycheck i earned for the workload but uh talladega ain't one of them i'll tell you that right now uh so uh, you know i kind of take it in stride and i'm just thankful to have the position i have and um you know, as far as the carnage is considered, uh, concerned, um, uh, this year in particular, we've seen more carnage on the mile and a half than I think we did last year. And I think there's ebbs and flows to that that uh, are hard for me to explain or make any sense out of uh, because I felt like the last two years there wasn't a lot of crashes. So um, 
I don't know exactly what to make of that, Bob, but um, I was glad to uh, come out victorious despite it. No, not really, because I, I thought the spring race at Talladega and, and Daytona in July especially had a lot of carnage and not a lot of cars left at the finish. So um, I don't know if I would say that. We'll go next no to problem. Kelly, then to Caleb, uh, and then to David, then to Caleb. Kelly Crandall, Racer.com. Brad, your teammate was also up there making moves. Were you wondering what his agenda might be because there were times where it looked like he was going for it. There's other times <laughs> where he was throwing big blocks yeah. on people. What – kind of what was his agenda there well you know um joe and i are, are good friends and and I, I i think great teammates and i i think that we have an understanding between each other that no matter what the scenario is we don't expect each other to hurt themselves to help each other but if you have a way of helping each other without hurting yourself you, you try to take it um you know i think he made the block he made on the last lap or so i, I don't know exact timing because it was the right move to help his day, not necessarily to, to help mine. And and at the end, he, um, you know, he made the move to win the race, and, and I just was able to execute the block. So, uh, you know, he didn't let up at all. Um, he could have chose <clears throat> a different lane for sure um, and probably had an equal shot at winning. He, he chose the one he did, and if it didn't work, it was going to benefit me, and that's, that's kind of what happened, or in my opinion, from what I could tell. Um, I don't think I would have won the race if he would have picked a different lane. I don't think he was trying to make sure I won the race. I think he was trying to make sure he won it, and it just didn't come together for him. David, then to Caleb, then to Jerry, then the press box. David Morgan, Motorsports Tribune. Uh, four to one, all four restrict paint races this year. What makes them so good on these type of tracks? A uh, number of factors. Um, you know, I, I would say the reliability is good. Um, you know the, some pretty you know good drivers for these type of tracks uh, doesn't hurt um the deficiencies that we seem to have on the mile and a half tracks lend themselves to you know probably proficiencies proficiencies at these type of tracks um with the power band in the engine is you know uh, at the very high rpm where the motors have been limited on the other tracks to very low rpms uh so that benefits us here hurts us at other tracks uh, and the cars are quite a bit down on uh, downforce for the mile and a half compared to the rest of the, the field, uh, but also quite a bit better on drag, which uh, makes it advantageous for these type of tracks. So I think the strengths and weaknesses throughout the field right now are, uh, are quite a bit different with, between the manufacturers, uh, with this being the strength of the, the Ford uh, package. Uh, at this time, and, and you probably could say the Chevrolet package as well with how they uh, qualify and race here. Um, so, you know, in that light, we know that we have to come to these races and, and make something happen because this is, uh, you know, our opportunity. Um, and we'd like to find more to, to be more competitive on the Mount Hass, but that's not the, you know, opportunity as it stands right now. So we have to make the most of these. Caleb. Caleb Whistler, kicking the tires.net. Brad, you talked about the advantage Roche's horsepower has here and the disadvantage it has at other tracks. How do you feel going forward? to say like Martinsville, Phoenix, Texas? Well, the, the good thing about uh, the first track you said was Martinsville is that you spin the, the tires there. So the engine, um, you know, from a horsepower standpoint is, is not as critical, uh, you know, when you can't put the gas pedal down. It's, you know, that's one of the, I think that's why we run so well there. If you, if you look at the tracks where the Fords have won this year, uh, it's been the, um, the tracks where you have uh, very little rear tire grip, a lot of wheel spin, Sonoma, Martinsville. Um, and it's been the, the super speedways. Uh, so I, I don't think that's, you know, a, a mistake by any means. Uh, but then I look at, you know, Texas, Kansas, and, and probably even Homestead and Phoenix, and uh, we, we know those are tracks that we're not as good as we want to be. Uh, the four car seems to found a, you know, a little bit more speed than the rest of the Fords, and, and he's, he's close, but I think even he would say he's probably not exactly where he wants to be. Uh, so, you know, we can get caught up in deficiencies or, or we can make the most of what we have. And, you know, I feel like uh, we have a lot of opportunities in front of us, and I want to make the most of what we have. Go next to Jerry, then the press box, then back down to Bob. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires at net and PRN. Um, I talked to Joey after the race. It was on his 300th start, he got a win. On your 300th start, <laughs> you got a win. Several other drivers have gotten wins on their 300th start. What do you say about that? How does it make you feel to yeah. know that that stat's out there now? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not real big in numerology. Um, 
I know people. Some people like it. I, I don't. I wouldn't. If this was number two hundred ninety nine, I'd be just as happy. I'll be honest with you, Kerry. Uh, but uh, it, it is still uh, still nice. Let's head up to the press box for a question. Come in, press box. Okay, we're going to come back downstairs to Bob. Bob Hockris, ESPN. Do you uh, are you watching Final Live? Yeah, I, I caught like a brief glimpse of it. So I, sometimes I got no idea what happened either. <laughs> 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 Being honest with you. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, um, do, do you feel that Martinsville is a must-win situation? And if you can win there, do you feel like you've almost kind of stolen a spot in – the championship round yeah martinsville at, at this moment as it stands i would say is a must win for us and, and we know that going in uh we tested there and you know we feel like that's a type of track that we have a lot of strength for so um at this point yes but you know that, that could change so we'll, we'll you hate to say it's, it's still three weeks away right go over here to your right over here hi taryn walk tuscaloosa news you had the cheers to dale jr on your car how much did that mean to you, and what was the like mindset to do that? Yeah, there was a, a lot going on this weekend, and, and that was one of the special ones uh, for sure. Um, you know, at the start of the year, uh, we were very fortunate because not everybody gets these opportunities, but Miller Lite um, told us that we could take the car for two races and put whatever paint scheme we wanted to put on it. And for uh, They gave us uh, here in uh, Phoenix, and we were able to take our car for Phoenix and, and do something with our charity to celebrate uh, Veterans Day that we're really – you know, happy about, and then uh, take the paint scheme uh, here at Talladega, and we were trying to come up with the right idea, and it just, it was kind of a dub moment when we said Talladega, and we get a special paint scheme, well, we should do something to, to honor um, Dale for that, with respect to the opportunity he gave me early in my career, and uh, the white 88 Navy car, um, so it was, it was kind of a, a perfect fit, and it was nice to be able to um, show some love and respect to him for everything he's done. Um, for me and for the sport. Uh, I think that's something that we can all be uh, grateful for in, in a lot of ways. Uh, and I was happy to do that. I knew coming in here it was going to be tough because people saw me run the paint scheme and I think they expected I was going to let Dale win. <laughs> um, and, but one of the, the great things about competition and, and I think about Dale is um, that I think he respected the, the car and the, what it meant to, to run that kind of paint scheme but didn't expect uh, for us not to try to beat each other and and that's exactly what we tried to do, and uh, he, he pushed me to the limit and uh, did a great job. Okay, we're going to go back up to the press box for another try. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. Brad, I guess it was um, at Daytona in 2016, we sat upstairs in the press box and we watched the Toyotas gather up together, work out a game plan, and Denny Hamlin went to the finish of the Daytona 500. Since then, the Ford camp has won the last seven races. You guys came in with a strategy this weekend. Can you just talk about how that evolved to have that kind of gamesmanship among you all and push you to the seventh consecutive win for Ford? Yeah, it's a, it's a big number. Um, you know, there was, a, I think, another things that happened. We got beaten kind of embarrassed at Daytona in 2016 for the 500, and um, I think we all felt like at that point – we hadn't done enough homework and that we needed to get back to work. Um, and, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, that's exactly what we did. Um, so, you know, that was definitely a, a you know, hitting a, right between the eyes. Um, but I also think that the four drivers and, and teams are, you know, cognizant of how difficult these races are to win by yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, again, nobody expects, at least I don't expect, I should say, that anyone to pull over and let me win a race. But, you know, if there's an opportunity to help a Ford win, we want to see that happen. But, but the fact that you guys, I mean, from the weekend, when the weekend started, you guys were out there practicing together, pulling together. I mean, it just seemed like one team effort among yeah, the Ford Yeah, I would say that guys. for sure. No, it's, it's a good way to summarize it. And, you know, there's some, you know, conveniences to that um, with respect to not having too many cars in the packs and, and risking getting wrecked and, and so forth and pitch strategies and whatnot. But, uh you know, it also can be difficult sometimes, but um, I think uh, in general, the, I'm really happy with how all the Ford teammates uh, have embraced each other uh, because we want to see Ford be successful. Okay, we're going to come downstairs here to Jim. 
JimOuterMotorsport.com. The decision to pit to uh, fix the radio. I believe Paul said when he was in here that he didn't think you could win if you couldn't talk to your spotter. Mm -hmm. What was, I don't know, did you have a role? I, I don't know what you could hear at the time. Did you yeah. have a role in that decision, and what did you think no, about I, it? I, you know, Paul was about the only one I could hear. He had some big old honking radio that broke through all the antennas, I guess, and interference. And I heard him say pit, and I was I don't want you to say pit. <laughs> um, but I have to respect that they can see things I can't see. Um, and uh, I feel like that's what happened, transpired. Um, and uh, he said it, and I was going, oh, God, I hate this. But uh, we pitted, and it worked out. I'm still not sure what broke, but uh, they did a great job fixing it. Thanks, Jim. Well, well, Brad, congratulations on victory number 24 in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. Thank you very much. Good luck on your pursuit of number 25. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.